Good afternoon, everyone, uh, and welcome to today's SEO Q&A session with me and hopefully Mr. Chris Palmer. Um, not heard from him today, uh, but hopefully he does come along and join us in uh, with any questions that you've got. First off, though, do check out ODYS. The link is below. You get a hundred pounds sign up bonus just for signing up. Checking out what age domains are available. Um, so do check them out, ODYS. But yes, if you've just joined us, doing our usual weekly SEO Q and A session. Um, hopefully being joined by Mr. Chris Palmer as always. Um, but he's not online which means he may have been caught up in a call or something. But fingers crossed, he does pop on. Um, but, yeah, if you've got questions, put them in the live chat. We will go through as many questions as we possibly can. And, uh, yeah, let me know where you're from as well. Always good to know. Who is where? Mr. Paul Hogden. <coughs> Hogden. How are you, old boy? Long time no see. How about the tan? The tan is looking good. That's all I can say, Paul. Um, but how are you? Um, just give me a second. Just trying to make sure I did send Chris the link to join because that would be, yes, I have. That would be most helpful. Flavia, how are you? Um, just waiting on Chris joining us and also just waiting on people joining. Um, so if you are just joining, put your questions in the chat and uh, we will try and answer as many as we can. Um, Tangled, come on, this is good Spanish bronzed skin. Um, so, yeah. Don't be jealous, old boy. And Madge from magicpr.com is here as well. But um, Chris Palmer is not. Um, but it would be the first time um, if he's been caught up on a call or whatever. But we can still crack on with the questions and make sure we answer any kind of questions. There's no such thing as a stupid question. So anything you do have to ask. Please put it in the chat, and if I can't answer it, maybe someone in the chat can. Um, that's what it's all about. Madge, how are you from Paul Hogden? And Rahul Gupta, first question. <clears throat> what is the best way to learn SEO? There is a number of different ways in which you can learn, and that is really down to you. Now, there's a lot of content out there um, in terms of blog posts, YouTube videos, courses, and everything else. So I would try to consume as much content as I possibly could following people that, that are good at what they do. Um, whether you're a video learner or whether you'd rather read a book or whether you would rather do a course is really up to you. Um, you know, so there's so many places you can get the information. It's all Googleable or YouTubeable, if that's such a word. But yeah, there's lots of places online you can learn. Uh, all the information's out there. It's uh, just how you piece it together. So that's the best way to learn. There's no quick one one solution for you um, or no one course that gives it all away. I think it's taking all the different little bits from different people is what makes you, you know, the, the, the SEO that you're going to become. So that would be my advice to you, Rahul, um, but plenty of information on YouTube. I'm a visual learner. I'd much rather watch someone demonstrating stuff than... Uh, than potentially messing about with books and stuff, but that's just a personal preference, so everyone's different. I've also got a mastermind as well, Rahul. CraigCampbellMastermind.com 
and there's a bunch of people in there and you can learn in there. We do different sessions, two or three sessions a week where you can learn all sorts of different stuff. Hello, Stefan. How are you? Uh, Flavia, have you seen the tests of the past few days made by Google in the USA? Infinite scroll instead of page one, page two, etc. I did see you mention it yesterday, Flavia, um, but I haven't actually seen or checked the results. Um, I'm still catching up from my trip to Barcelona. I'm not sure I like the whole infinite scroll thing, but um, yeah, uh, it is what it is. There's nothing we can do to to <laughs> to change that. Um, but I'm not sure I like the whole infinite scroll thing. And um, what what are your thoughts on it? Um, be curious to know. But I'm glad they test it in America before they test it here. That's all I can say. <laughs> um, Paul Hogden, SEO underground tickets released on Monday. What was the wait a minute? I'm going to get the domain seounderground.co.uk. I'm just loading it up myself. Um, is it this Monday they're going to sell? Out of curiosity, Paul. And it is in October the 13th. Um, obviously, the website. Du, 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 conference, merch. Speaker list, itinerary. Um, but is it this coming Monday or did they go on sale on Monday? Because I'm not finding it that easy to find on the website. Wait a second. I'm going to make the assumption it's the coming Monday. Um, the website updates on Monday. Right, cool. So I'm looking at it going, it's got all the new market shit on it. What the fuck? Uh, and hello, Sanji. And Madge, you better be coming along. Um, Radisson Blue Hotel Stansted. Um, and yes, tickets will go on sale on Monday. I will give that a proper shout out next week when we're on. Um, and hopefully um get to see people coming along and um, to the event and stuff so yeah let me know guys if you are interested and we will give it a shout out next monday uh rahul's got another question or raul sorry and um, do i think ai replace seo in the near future uh i don't think it will replace seo as such i think you always need human beings to control it um, but I think it will be a big part um, of online going forward, for sure. Um, AI content is not where I thought it would have been at this point. But um, listen, AI in general is coming and uh, it's going to be a big part of online things and it's going to develop. So I don't think it'll ever replace SEO. SEO is optimizing. Um, and I think you always will need human human beings to, to control a lot of that stuff. But we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, David Troy. How do you get structured citations for local lead gen site? I don't have a real phone number except those from CallRail. Um, can you not just get a VoIP number from someone? I don't know where you're based, David, but the the likes of Soho, um, Soho66.co.uk, um, I've got a VoIP number which just points onto a mobile, um, and that would be the real phone number that I've got. Um, so that should work for you. I'm not sure about call real, but um, in terms of you know not having a real phone number, obviously for for Google looking for um, name, address, and phone number, and, and trying to 
join the dots together um, on your citations. I think you know you do need to have a consistent, stable phone number going forward for each and every um, lead gen site you've got. Um, and I'm not sure if what Call Rail does if the number change if those number change, or if Google frowns upon Call Rail numbers or whatever because I've never used them. But uh, I, I certainly use VoIP numbers, and uh, and that works very well. And Paul saying Twilio is also good for buying numbers, mobile or local numbers. Um, so I would go for one of those, but I'm not sure that's 100% answering your question. I don't know if there's more context you could maybe add, David, um, and I can answer it slightly better. Um, but Booth Co., Good to see you, mate. Good to see you. Sandy, are mass page builders good to generate phone calls for paper call offers? I don't have a budget for paper click ads, so I'm completely relying on mass page builder and local SEO. Sandy, I know many people um, who use mass page builders to generate local leads um, and all that kind of stuff. And yes, they can work. Listen, there is a danger that your website will get slapped, um, you know, with a Google update and whatnot. But, you know, they, they work. They still work. And obviously in a very local level, um, there's not a huge amount of competition for a lot of things. So I think, you know, the, the, the model works. I'm not going to sit here and say it's, uh, it's a long-term business strategy or anything like that because the, the chances are your lead gen website will get pulled. Um, but, Mass page builders, you can no longer just throw out hundreds of thousands of pages. You've got to drip feed them out. Do you need hundreds of thousands of pages? No. You know, do you want to cover a lot of areas? Yes. So mass page builders work very well. And I know the Magic Page plugin guys do a really, really good job. They they advise a lot in their group on what is the kind of good figures to do. The problem is getting a lot of those pages indexed. Um and again, I don't think there's anything perfect about the mass page builder <laughs> model, but I think if you throw enough at it um, in terms of volume, you will certainly get calls and leads and people are doing it with a massive degree of success. So if you don't have budget for pay-per-click ads, it is very much a, a valid option. And certainly, you know, if I was in your position where I didn't have budget for pay-per-click ads and I wanted to make, you know, a paper, paper call, um, offer, then yeah, I would be using the mass page builder 100%. So hopefully that answers it. And Magic Page Plugin would be my tool of choice. Um, I just think the Mike Martin and the, the fellas over there are very switched on. And um, <coughs> yeah, I, 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 you know, that would be the one that I use. You know, other people say Serp Shaker, other people say other ones, but I think the Magic Page Plugin guys certainly are very advanced when it comes to all of this stuff and I like the whole setup. So that's one to look at. So hopefully that helps you, Sanji. And <coughs> Mohammed, link building is exhaustive. Any tips to build links at scale? Let me know what you're doing to build links first and foremost. What's exhausting about it? What part of it is taking the most amount of time? And then just so I can understand what you're doing uh, in terms of building links uh, so that I can advise you better or where you're potentially going wrong. So come back to me with that, Mohammed. And thank you, David. Um, does it good to use AI writing tool to write a blog post and does it rank in Google? Rao, if you were to simply just take an AI tool, write a blog post and churn it out, then no, I don't think it's really going to stick. Um, I'm sure there, there are arguments here to to that and people say, oh, I get one to stick or whatever. For me, AI does a bit of the grunt work. You would potentially use a paraphraser like Quillbot to, to paraphrase the AI content. You're going to potentially do some edits, um, adding in some subheadings and, and a bit of tweaking. Um, a lot of people will still do manual elements to the job as well, but I think AI does a lot of the heavy lifting, but it's not just AI. People are using their own different little bits and bobs, whether that be 
paraphrasing, stealing other snippets of content, maybe even manually writing bits of it. I don't know what everyone's doing, but essentially that it's something along those lines is what people are doing. It's not just press go on Jarvis and uh, and grab that stuff. It's just not good enough, um, is, is the honest answer. Um, <coughs> but guys, keep your questions coming and I will get to them all. Do not be impatient. I will try and get to the questions as quick as I can. Any SU Underground or UK shows on this year? So SU Underground <coughs> earlier, um, Paul was saying that uh, SU Underground, the tickets are going to go on sale on Monday. It's going to be on October the 13th in London, just next to Stansted Airport. Um, so that's going to be on. Uh, and I will also be speaking at EMC 2022 co.uk Einstein Marketer Conference and um, so that's the two that I'll be doing in the UK this year I'm not going to do um, any others in the UK um, that, that'll be the two that I'll be doing uh, in the UK this year um, I'm sure there are other events on I'm, I'm Brighton SEO's on in September I'm sure and uh, there, there's various other ones but um, certainly ones that I'll personally be going to would be SEO Underground and Einstein Market Conference. Um, so make sure, and the tickets for SEO Underground are going to sale next week, this coming Monday. So keep your eyes open, man. Paul Holden <coughs> is saying, Mass Page Builder works well for getting calls and leads. He's found his own sites get 75 25 split in favour of forms. And he doesn't use more than 100 pages on a site. I use Magic Page. Um, and I'm pretty sure Paul will back up, you know, if he was to throw a thousand, five thousand, twenty thousand. Um, he's probably going to be diluting everything there. So I like to hear that you're not using more than a hundred pages of site, Paul. I think that will certainly help your indexing and 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 obviously try and not spam the crap out of every area. Uh, <laughs> I think that's the, the key to success. And Sacklin. How to find subtopic in any niche? What do you mean by subtopic? So if you have a core topic, such as YouTube, um, you would then have to just go and do it, you know, initial research using different tools or whatever it's going to be, but it could be like children's YouTube channel. There's so many subtopics that you can find a lot of it's common sense. A lot of it is looking at the competition. A lot of it is just doing Google searches to see what else comes up. So if you put in YouTube, what else comes up um, as the auto suggest um, and stuff like that, you know, these are ways to find subtopics in any niche. Um, so that would be as, as really as simple as that. Um, but also just, you know, using a bit of common sense as well. Um, Raul, do I think social bookmarking is still working for link building? Certainly not, not something that I would be implementing. Um, <laughs> um it was good back in the day, man. I'll tell you that, but uh, so yeah, certainly I, I wouldn't be wasting my time with it. Um, is, is I don't want to be seen to be knocking it if someone else is doing it, um, but it's certainly not a strategy that I personally think offers any value at all um so yeah that's just my opinion on it dean davis hugging face can de definitely detect ai copywriting hugging face is a good tool um but it's gtp2 uh and obviously if you test hugging face the best way i can see is hugging face can say that articles are fake even when they're not. So I had a friend doing a test the other day and the hugging face gave it, you know, a, a percentage of fakeness. Now, when this person ran the same content through Grammarly and made the edits, it was saying it was faker. Um, so whilst hugging face can definitely detect AI copywriting or whether it's fake and stuff like that, can you still take that that seriously? Um can we get fake content to, to to index? The answer is yes. 
Um, so whilst I think hugging faces, it's okay as a guide, I think uh, be careful, don't take it as gospel is the best thing I can say. <laughs> but hey, it is what it is. Uh, Mohammed, we're building guest posts, link exchanges and partnerships via outreach. Outreaching is exhaustive, not much returns for the email sent. Uh, so yeah, outreach, of course, is tedious, hard work and gets a low response rate. Now, every morning I wake up and delete loads of outreach emails, people reaching out to me and don't even look at them. That That is just what happens. And uh, is there any tips? So guest posting, digital PR, I think are great, you know, clean ways to link directly to your money website. Then I'd be looking at niche edits uh, and stuff like that, which are a, a, a lower cost type of link, which again will help power up the digital PR or, or the guest posts or whatever it is you're getting. And then potentially another tier of link building automation, powering up those niche edits. That is how I would scale up my link building. I certainly wouldn't be wasting my time or energy doing outreach to people who don't reply. I think you're wasting your time. Uh, and I think that's why a lot of people use niche edits. That's why a lot of people use link building automation. It's just where you build that into your overall setup. And it's why a lot of people will build guest posts and that's all they report on. They don't want to talk about the tiered link building structure, the niche edits or anything like that. Um, so I think there is no quick way I can turn around and say, here's how you do outreach and your, your, you know, it's going to help your link building scale. Outreach is dead as far as I'm concerned. Complete and utter waste of time. Um, you know, you can use Harrow as well, you know, help a reporter out. Um, you can do all of these kind of things to build links, but certainly I would not be doing cold outreach. I, I just think it's, uh, it's no good. Um, so there you go. L. Ron Hubbard, Craig, your profit of profits here. Scientologists are wrecking my data Scientology. They are trying to stop our fight against intergalactical demons and locking me out of my email. I would suggest that you speak to a security, IT security guy or something like that. Um, that's probably your best bet, man. Um, um, I'm not sure if that's genuine or not, but hey, I'm going to make the assumption that it's not genuine. Uh, apologies if it is. Um, but yes, yeah, speak to your IT guy. Um, Hog Hogden is looking forward to seeing Boothco at the next SU Underground. So make sure you do keep an eye out on suunderground.co.uk for tickets. Um, Raul, what is your thought about micro niche? Does it is it does it a really the best way to drive traffic to your website? <sighs> micro niches. It's really up to you, uh, Raul. I'm not going to sit here and say go after a niche website or a micro niche website or whatever. It's up to you now. Do I know guys who've got? A micro, what I would call a micro niche website, yes. You know, I've seen so many websites over the years where someone sells something very, very specific. Now, how do you find them? Again, research manual, you have to do the legwork. I cannot give you a tool um, or a suggestion on where to find the best micro niche websites. Um, there may be tools out there that do it, but I think it all comes with experience and stuff like that. Um, I think uh, as far as I'm concerned you have to do your research and I'm not going to sit here and say that you know niching down isn't the right way to go because you can have a very niche specific website um, but you're going to have to dig a bit deeper and do your own research into that and, and you know no one is going to share uh, those micro niche websites out there publicly because why would they want you to jump into their niche so that's where it's all about doing your own research 
um, and sometimes you stumble across something and do some uh, research on it and you look and go, wow, that's not competitive at all from an SEO point of view. That is the, the goal that you're looking for. I would love to enter niche web, uh, niche, uh, micro niche websites all the time. You know, if I could come up with the ideas and go in after all the kind of low competition stuff that had high volume. But, you know, they are hard to find. So you do need to dig about about yourself and hopefully that helps you. But there's no great tool or anything that helps you do that. Um, and hello, Maeve. Hope you're well. Um, good to see you here. I'm on my own today. I don't know what happened to Chris Palmer. But guys, do keep your questions coming. I will try and go through as many of them as I can. Um, we do have like four or five questions in front of us. Um, but keep them coming. Um, and I will get round to answer as many of the decent questions as I possibly can. Hosey, good to see you, my man. Have I used OpenAI for content? The answer is no, Hosey. <laughs> I, it is on my to-do list to check. Um, OpenAI, uh, one of my friends, Ryan Durrani, uses it. Um, and he bangs on about it. And, and I've heard amazing things about OpenAI. I personally just not get around to trying it. Um, so that, that's the, the truth of that. <laughs> um, but I, all I've heard is amazing things. I've never, ever heard a negative about OpenAI. Um, and it's definitely on uh, my to-do list for sure. Um, I, I found another one the other day uh, that one of the people in my mastermind found, Gilo, and <laughs> it looks good as well. So you're just getting pulled all over the place but um, with, with all these different AI tools. But it's, uh, yeah, as I say, I'm still still happy to keep checking them out, but I've not used that one in particular, but heard amazing things, mate. So hope that helps in some way. Um, Skilled Golf is a site. His putters, putters hybrid inside golf club. It's all subtopic, but I'm confused where this Surrey Brides and putters comes from. Not sure about the Surrey Brides. I'm not sure Surrey Brides... And golf putters are in any way potentially a subtopic, unless the bride likes golf or something. Uh, <laughs> but <coughs> that seems a bit odd. Um, like, who's telling you this? Is a site and his putters hybrid. Sorry, bride. It must be hacked. It's got to be. Sorry, bride has nothing at all to do with golf or putters. Nothing at all. Um, unless that's the name of a bloody putter or something, which I doubt would be a crazy name, right? Um, any services to create GMB profiles for local businesses to promote paper call offers? Sanji, I've not personally come across something like that. Um, I've not personally, but I don't know if someone in the chats maybe came across that. But I mean, the problem is uh, creating these GMBs uh, is getting harder and harder. Um, you know, you need a phone number, you need this, that, and the next thing. Um, you need to warm up the account. So that's why it's getting harder and harder. So I don't know any off the top of my head that I could vouch for saying, you know, this 100% works. I'm sure there will be someone out there who does do it, but I don't want to recommend someone uh, without having used them or whatever. Um, but I do know it's getting harder and harder to, to create those accounts, um, which is why people are sitting with loads of phones and doing it the hard way. It's just everyone's ripped the backside out of it to the point where it's now getting almost impossible um, to do this on a massive scale. Um, so sorry, Sanji, uh, but if someone else can help Sanji or knows of a service they can vouch for, please put it in the chat. Rahul, what are the best AI writing tools according to me? Um, <sighs> Jasper's okay. Um, listen, <laughs> it's not the AI tool, it's who's using the AI tool that, that you know, and, and what your formula 
around about that is, um, you know, when I use such tools, I will use something like Writer, which I got from AppSumo to, to come up with blog ideas. I will then create paragraphs using Jasper. I will then go in to Quillbot and paraphrase those articles. I will then run it through Grammarly and edit it. And then an editor will go in and, and tweak it around a little bit as well. That is kind of the process. So the, the AI tool itself isn't hugely important. You just need one that, that does okay. Um, but it's the mixture of other stuff that goes on is what's important. Raul is the best way for me to describe that, man. Um, Mohammed, can you explain a bit about link building automation? So if you look at tools like Money Robot, SEO Autopilot, tools like that, these are link building automation tools, building Web 2.0s and similar um, on Autopilot. Now, these are only used to power up niche edits. They, they help with indexing. They help with a whole bunch of other stuff. They do not carry a huge amount of power as such. Um, but there's many of those tools that have got guides all over YouTube which will explain how they work why they work, what's involved in them working, but basically it's creating a whole bunch of web 2.0s um, on autopilot, which in turn will, will boost uh, and help create uh, links for you. So I'm not saying that they move the needle massively, but uh, you know, throwing mass spam at an niche edit is going to help power it up, and, and that is what a lot of people are doing. So Hopefully that helps you, mate. Cyclean, silo structure versus topical cluster versus only categories. Which worked well in the site structure? Um, like silo structure, virtual silos, they're all the same thing. I think you have to make sure that you have the topical relevance or have your topical cluster in place. Um, I wouldn't only begin after only categories. I think, you know, you'd need that topical cluster and the topical cluster is the main topic and the cluster of supporting pages round about that cluster, making sure that they're all topically relevant helps Google understand what that cluster is. Um, that is what works well. I wouldn't only be using categories. Um, so a topical cluster, could you call that a silo structure? You could call it that as well, whatever. They all kind of mean much of the same thing. You're just joining the dots for Google to say the core topic here and all those support articles which all internally link into the core topic is your kind of silo structure or topical cluster or virtual silo, um, let's call it that. So it doesn't have to be any more difficult than that. Um, it's very, very simple and easy to implement. So... Hopefully that makes sense to you. Raul, does it... Uh, can you make a career out of being an SEO freelancer? What's my point of view on it? Of course you can. Uh, many people make money as freelancers, not just SEO freelancers. Could be a content writing freelancer, whatever. Web development freelancer. If you're good at something, will someone use your service? Will someone use you as a freelancer? And I think, yes, you know, rather than using you as an employee, someone can use you for whatever time they need you for, uh, and it allows you freedom to work with multiple people as well. So I think being a freelancer is a very, very good option. It allows you flexibility and, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, and yes, lots of people are doing it, and you see all these digital nomads staying around the world um, doing their thing as a freelancer, and... Uh, Happy days, and um, you know, fair play to them, hats off to them, massively jealous of them. So it can work very, very well. And Maeve's saying you can try it for free. They give you eighteen dollars credit, which is a ridiculous amount of words. And um, so I think that's for OpenAI. Am I right, Maeve? I might be wrong, but I think it is. And Raoul, thank you, man. Tattoos are the way forward. Uh, I'm only kidding. Don't go out and get tattoos. Um, just my personal choice. 
Um, Vavi Digital, how to recover from Google Discover traffic drop? Blah, 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 drop. Now, when was this traffic drop um, on Google Discover? Um, was it after an update? What, what, you know, what is going on? Um, have you tried to understand why that might have happened? Um, I need more context to be able to answer that. So come back and tell me when this happened um, and stuff like that as well. Raul, do I provide SEO training? Yes, I do. Or you can join my mastermind at craigcampbellmastermind.com where I've got a mastermind where you can join a whole bunch of people where I do group coaching mastermind type sessions. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of other people in there as well where um, everyone's helping each other. So that can be done from six to nine pounds a month. Um, Carl, local listing services, seobuilder.com would be my preferred choice, Carol. Um, that's one I've used for many years. And uh, yeah, he, he, Robert Kirk, his name is, um, does an amazing job. And everyone that goes there recommends him. So can't speak highly enough about SEO Builder for local listing services. Um, but guys, keep your questions coming. I'm just giving Chris Palmer a wee message. I'm going to make the assumption something uh, has come up or happened, um, but just want to make sure all is good. But as I say, keep your questions coming, guys, and I will try and go through as many as I possibly can. Samira, how do I expert in SEO? Do, 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 beginner to very advanced. Learning SEO, Samra. I mean, there's YouTube, there's courses all over the place. Um, there's just so much information out there. Um, I would start trying to consume as much of it as you can, whether that's reading a book, whether it's watching YouTube, whether it's reading blog posts, whether it's hanging about in forums. All of the above are really good. Um, you just need to... to figure out which is the best for you. It's certainly going to be a steep learning curve. It's certainly not something uh, that, that happens um, that quickly. You know, I certainly think it would take you a few years to to kind of get a full grasp on everything. Um, but that's how I learned online. And I think most of us have. But uh, there are courses and stuff out there as well. Don't want to say someone's course is better than the other. Um, but there are beginner courses. But the, everything's in YouTube is all I would say. Everything is in YouTube, so check it out. I've got 800 plus videos on it, so it's a great place to start. Um, and then, you know, when you're looking for the more advanced stuff, then join masterminds or, or you know, try and network with people, and you might get some of those kind of golden nuggets um, at that point. Can hunt SEO client without having a website? Does we can hunt SEO client without having a website? If you're asking me, can you find an SEO client without having a website? I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can. Um, but I think case studies and, and some point of reference would always be better for you. So I would start with getting a website, to be honest, and promoting what services and stuff you've got on there. So that would be my advice to you. How to make a website topical authority? I mean, content links are going to help you create topical authority. What's on the website is, is massively important. What type of content that's on there is, of course, going to give Google an indicator of what topics you cover. Uh, and the links that point to your website would also manipulate that. So, again, where your, where, where your website's listed, alongside the content that's on your website would determine the topical authority of your website. Um, so, yeah, simple and easy answer there, man. Carol, I get rid of my services page and just have separate, separate pages now to avoid cannibalism. That was my only real category silo other than the blog. Hopefully a good move. 
if that's all you get after, then fair play. You know, there is no point in having uh, stuff that, that's going to cannibalise against each other. Um, and hopefully it was the right move. Um, so fingers crossed for you, mate. Fingers crossed for you. Open AI, it's 0 0.0006 a word or something. So I'm going to try it out. I'm definitely going to try it out. Um, Vavi is wondering why um, the Google Discover um, traffic um, has gone away. And uh, it's one of those things... Um, It's it's a personalized feed um for people to be able to to, to see your content. Uh, now if you find that you have been hit by the kind of May update and stuff like that, uh, then there could be a number of different things that could be wrong. Um it could be technical issues on your website, um, but it's it's the quality of your website. Do Google like that website? Do they, uh, you know, do they think that you're posting enough? Do they think it's you know the best website for for what you're trying to be in Discover for? So the quality of your website could be problematic. Uh, now I don't know the website, so I'm, I'm not suggesting it is. Um, however, if the content's kind of spun and it's all kind of garbage, and it was getting uh, found on Google Discover and it's no longer, that could be the case. The, the quality is just not good enough. Um, have you got any content policy violations? Um, now, the, these are all things that you have to look at. It's the quality um, of the, the website that you've got. And if you're doing everything by the book, uh, you don't have any policy violations, you're feeding it unique content, that is all topically relevant and everything to what you're doing, then you you shouldn't be losing your traffic. Uh, now, a lot of people do get slammed for ropey content or whatever. Now, you might be paying someone thinking that you're getting the best content, and they could be using AI, they could be using bits of other people's content, and Google's just not going to put that stuff in Google Discover. So, you know, it is a quality thing, um, and it's a local news website. Um, you're saying, um, so I've just seen that it's a local news website. You know, where is the news articles coming from? Are they unique? Are they, you know, are they any different from what's in any other news website out there? Um, and the chances are you're probably using feeds to repurpose stuff. So, I'm, I, you know, I think I can see why Google would potentially penalize that low quality work and not show it, show it all the time uh, in the, the Google Discover traffic. So I think it's definitely a quality issue in terms of your content and stuff like that. Um, you just have to to figure out what's going on and you can use the likes of Hugging Face to see if AI's been there, you know, check Copyscape, check the stuff out. But realistically, news websites um, are of low quality and in a lot of cases, not suggesting yours is, but a lot of the content is, is ropey at best. So um that is what i would be looking at um and it's seobuilder.com carol um, hopefully that helps prabu i bought an age domain from odys what's my suggestion 301 or redirect or build website on that now first things first if you have bought that domain you're going to have to build or recreate what was already there right off the bat, that's the first thing you do, regardless of where you go next. Now, the reason for that is you want to, to get uh, all the old URLs published. You want to get them in Google's index so that any of the old links that are pointing to that age domain then kick back in, they're live again. You want to get that just flown. Now, from there... Of course, you could simply redirect to a new website, eh, to, to another website or whatever. But why would you want to do that? You know, why would you want to do a 301 redirect? Why not build a website on it? Build an asset on it. It's uh, the best way of being able to make money utilizing a, an already 
existing backlink profile. And for me, nine times out of ten, I would build a website on it. But I'm not going to sit here and say you have to. You can 301 redirect it to another project if you want to to pass the power from, from the age domain over. But nine times out of ten, I would 100% be building a new asset out on it. Um, that's just my opinion. Take advantage of the existing backlink profile and build something out on it. Um, Raul, building links, dropping content on it is going to help your domain authority. Now, links is the big thing, pushing domain authority. Now, there are gigs out there on Fiverr and similar where they can manipulate this um, to increase the domain authority. Increasing the domain authority of a website doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to rank any better. So I wouldn't suggest that you think of how can I increase this for the, for the sake of increasing the domain authority. I think it would happen naturally as you 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 do your link building and, and everything else that you're going to be doing when you are optimizing <coughs> your website. So it's not something I would try and force up in any way. It will happen over a period of time, but links um, is what is going to help build up the domain authority of your website. Business growth ready. Good to see you, bud. You can have all your service pages for customers who find you, non-search, then no index that page. If cannibalize, cannibalism is an issue, no index follow. Um, so you, there is a number of different ways you can do it. Um, so there you go. Which WordPress theme do you suggest for affiliate SEO? There's tons of them. If you want a WordPress theme, go to Theme Forest uh, and do your own research. I don't want to sit here and say there is a particular theme. I think a lot of people use Divi, Elementor, uh, Genesis, that you know are three common, commonly used ones. That doesn't mean you have to use them. The template's the template. Whatever one you think looks the nicest and serves the purpose that you want um, is the best for affiliate SEO. Um, and which niches <laughs> nowadays to start with, Jury? It's a, an open-ended question. Um, there's so many niches out there. Um, you know, you can you can you can sell CBD oil. You could sell hair brushes. You could sell golf clubs. It really has to be something that you have some kind of interest in rather than what we think, um, mainly because you're the one that's going to have to be writing about it a lot um, at the start in particular. So it has to be something that you understand and know something about is what I would suggest. But there's, there's money in every niche out there, almost every niche anyway. Um, and do you only work in affiliate or do I have my own e-commerce? Um, I have e-commerce stores. I'm an SEO guy. I don't just do affiliate. Um, I like affiliate and I do a lot of it. But it's not the only thing I do. Ecom's good. SaaS is good. Um, SEO is SEO. Marketing is marketing. Um, and you know, you've got to believe that you're good at what you do and uh, drive traffic to a website and make money. So whether that's ecom, whether it's affiliate, um, whatever it may be, um, is entirely up to yourself. But I think having a diverse income stream, um, you know, whether that be e comm affiliate or whatever, uh, is a healthy thing to have as well. And I like to just try new things and get my fingers involved in other bits and bobs uh, so that I'm always learning. Sanji. Do spin tags work to create hundreds of unique city pages for local SEO? I analyzed many big local business websites and they don't change anything on their city and service pages except zip code and city name. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say that that works 100%, um, Sanji, but do mass page builders work? Yes. Um are they changing a whole lot on these pages? No. 
Um, but spin tax certainly wouldn't be the way I'd be, I'd be doing it. Um, I mean, you can spin content, you can uh, paraphrase it. There's loads of different ways to do it. Um, you can do it a lot better than what these guys are doing. A lot of guys will simply just change out the the city and service pages and change the zip code and the city name. Is that enough? I don't think so. I think you will get caught. If you get away with it, it will be for the short term. Um, I would be doing more editing on that to make sure that it was done properly. Um is, is all I would say on it, Sanji. Um, don't try and cheap out on it. Um, you're going to spend the time doing it. Try and do it properly. You know, how much longer does it take to paraphrase stuff or whatever? So, yeah, I would always uh, suggest to to do it a little bit better than, than what everyone else is currently doing. Judy, do you suggest using Jasper and similar tools or better to a void since Google could penalise because of that. So yes, you can potentially uh, suffer from having poor content on a website, and I think uh, May's update showed that to be the case. Um, I'm not saying that's Jasper's fault. Um, I think that's down to the people who use Jasper. Um, I wouldn't say you have to avoid them. I just think you have to be cleverer, cleverer on how you use them. Um, and do more editing and have a better process in place. And I think Jasper and any of the other AI writing tools have their, their place in the industry and they'll help people with some of the heavy lifting, as I've said earlier in the show. Um, I would certainly use a strategy like that initially. When my website pages start to get traffic and make me money, then I would be paying someone to rewrite those pages properly. Um, so that they stick for the long term. Uh, because yes, Google can come and eventually penalise crap content. And uh, it's really up to you whether you want to, to, to start slowly and uh, just offer quality content um, or you want to, you need to get the wheels moving a little bit faster to, to get some income and revenue. You may have to use Jasper or something similar. So. It's entirely up to you, but there are risks, of course, by using Jasper. Raul, what is my thought about web stories? Does it a great way to drive traffic on a site nowadays? Whether it be web stories, whether you use YouTube shorts, whether you use anything that can get you a small amount of traffic, why wouldn't you try... To, to position yourself on these platforms the same way that, of course, I've got a website, but I've got a YouTube channel, I've got a LinkedIn, I've got a Facebook, I've got a Twitter. The job is to drive as much traffic from all of these different sources that I possibly can. So is Web Stories a good place to drive some traffic through? 100%. I, you know, I wouldn't be discounting any traffic out there at all. Um, I think you've got to take full advantage of anything that's available out there. Um, and, you know, I think in the last few years, we've seen TikTok um, as an example of that. You know, TikTok has blown up since COVID. I know it was already there pre-COVID, but I think when COVID happened, TikTok, you know, really blew up in my experience um, and people are over there making money now. People, TikToks, TikTok ads, people are all over it. Um, it's another traffic source. It's another place that's blown up. And people will do whatever to, to get that traffic. So I think definitely take advantage of anything that will, will generate traffic, which is potential revenue for you. So web stories, again, would be up there with that, mate. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, we do have a few minutes left if you've got any other final questions, people. Also, whoop, if you haven't, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. There's a weird bloody thing, right? The amount of people that watch these sessions 
and the amount that actually subscribe is insane. Um, not everyone subscribes, and I get it because I always also watch videos, but subscribing is always good, guys. So please do um, subscribe. In my mastermind course, do you help directly with students on their own projects? No, it's a group coaching session. Um, you know, the, the, the purpose of a group coaching session is to talk generically about uh, stuff and obviously the costs are very low. Um, to help someone with their own projects would require one-on-one -on -one help and looking into your project all the time. So the mastermind probably wouldn't be a perfect fit for you because we just don't have enough time to focus on you and your projects because there's 50 other people in the group and they don't want to hear just about one person's project. What we tend to do is ask people in the mastermind, what topics do you want to talk on? They will say GMBs, they will say link building, they will say whatever it might be, and we will talk about that topic and then everyone gets their little chance to have a little bit of input. But talking about your topic specifically would require one-on-one, -on -one, as I say. Um, and people do sell one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, but we don't do that in the mastermind. There's just not enough time to do it, um, and it wouldn't be fair on the other members of the mastermind. So uh, certainly not something we could help with in that respect, um, just to be fair to everyone in the group. Um, Walid. Currently trying to rank a local website in Dubai, but they're two languages, Arabic and English. GMB is set in English. Which language to focus on more? <laughs> I do not know the answer to that one, uh, Walid. Um, it really depends on the people that hit the website. Uh, you know, you'd need to, to dig deeper into the analytics on the website. Is the website available in two languages? Um, and which one of those languages gets read the most? So that is the, the one you'd have to focus on more. I'm not sure if there's more English-speaking people in Dubai than, than there is Arabic. I would probably say Arabic is going to be far superior Um you know, I think English would be the minority over there, but I might be completely wrong with that. So um, you would need to, to, yeah, I'm not the right person to answer that one, man, without seeing the data. Um, Quillbot and Writer, I certainly use. I have no idea what Simplified is, um, but Writer I do use and Quillbot I do use. So... Two of the three tools you use, I am also using. And Mr. Chase Rayner, my man, thank you very much, Chase. And for whoever was asking, where are the best places to, to learn SEO and stuff? Um, Chase gives a lot away. So go and check out Chase's channel as well. Um, great guy, does a great job, and uh, someone that you can learn things from. So check Mr. Chase Rayner out. You're looking good in that picture, Chase. Love it. Um, <laughs> how to steal market share from competitor. Outrank them is the best way to steal the market share. Make sure you do what they do and more. Outrank them. And uh, that's it. <laughs> um, that's the SEO way to do it. And yes, Raul, I have visited India. I was in Bangalore um, a few years back with Sam Rush. And that was an SEO event that I spoke at. And uh, maybe one day if I'm invited, I would love to come back to India because I was only there for a small period of time. Uh, but I have been asked several times recently if I would be interested in coming back to speak at an event. And... Uh, until a formal offer is made, then I can't say yes, but I've been asked if I'd be interested. So there may be at some point um, in the near future that I will get back out there and, and hopefully speak at an event. I'd love to um, come back and, and check that part of the world out again. So 
I may be back as well. Flavia, where to find a good expired domain, not ODYS? GoDaddy Auctions, expireddomains.net, or you can use the tool Spamzilla. Um, Spamzilla will show you, and you can filter a lot of the expired domain names down by DRTF, all of that kind of stuff. You can filter it by keyword, language, and so many other things. So you can filter through all of the expired domain names based on the metrics that you're looking for on Spamzilla. And then you can go and uh, see what's happening there. Um, but just to clarify, ODYS is aged domains, not expired. Aged and expired are two different things. Um, aged means there is no break. They are like 20 years old, 25 years old, whatever it may be. Expired domain names do expire and then you purchase and the date starts from when you buy it again. So there are two differences, um, but Spamzilla would be my tool of choice, Flavia, for the um, for expired domains. So do check it out. And Rob Prosser, what is up, gent? Palmer didn't show up. Um, don't know what's happened. Uh, not heard from him, but um, fingers crossed he's all good. And uh, good to see you in at the end, Rob. And we are out of time, guys. So thank you very much for coming along. And hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a little like on the video. If you haven't, dislike's always fine. Um, and no problem, Raul. And thank you for coming along and... Uh, Hopefully, hopefully I've answered some of your questions and helped you in some way. But on that note, guys, I will be back next week, hopefully with Chris, and we'll catch you then. So take it easy, guys. See you later on.